At a recent Senate E-12 Education Committee hearing, testifiers spoke both for and against a bill that would require the Department of Education to create an easily understood academic rating system for public schools. How can we expect families, and particularly families who have been historically marginalized, to engage in helping schools improve if we don't provide clear, concise information about how the schools are doing right now? I've heard loud and clearly from many families that they are in support of this bill for the main reason of having something that's simple, easy to understand, and gives them a starting point on making the best decision for their kids. The dashboard is confusing. If, you're, if the school is in the bottom 5%, most parents don't know. And I think a 1 through 5, 8 through F, or a 0 to 100 rating system will give parents an easier way of understanding the data. Currently, it's just too hard to find, to understand, or to act on the information that's presented in the current school report cards. The summative rating which is proposed in this bill will make it easier for people to understand how well a school is serving all children and their own children. Broadly, stakeholders did not express an interest in a star rating system, um, or any summative rating system for that matter. Um, most stakeholders reported they felt that that was um, a punitive system and, shame, that, and shaming in nature. A single indicator, such as test scores, viewed out of context can be misleading as a measure of performance. I'm concerned that the Academic <coughs> Achievement Rating System proposed in Senate File 299 does not align with the priorities shared with me by my school community. <coughs> what I hear is that parents want to know that their children's education is comprehensive, that it is safe, and that it's engaging for their students. A rating system based largely on grades 3 through 8 MCA test scores for proficiency and achievement gaps provides a smaller slice of student experiences, and it is a slice on which the regional centers often perform worse than their neighbors. There is already an open enrollment outflow of students from regional center schools to their neighbors, and it's well documented by the Center for Rural Policy and Development. I fear that a single point rating system based on elementary test scores will accelerate this already troubling trend. Senator Roger Chamberlain now joins me to talk about bills to create a simpler school rating system and to establish tax credits for donations to K-12 scholarship programs. Thanks for being here. Good afternoon. Let's begin with the creation of what's referred to as a summative school rating system, like five stars or A through F that would be applied to <clears throat> schools. Uh, why is this necessary? Simplicity and transparency. A lot of parents out, if you go to the MDE website or a school website. And I have they are in, almost impossible to understand or read. Most, uh, most uh, college graduates can't understand this. It takes too long to get the information and get it uh, into a form usable and comparable. So this is a simple way to allow parents access to clear, transparent information uh, uh, to the performance of the schools and then allow them to compare it to others. So a quick snapshot. This isn't the first rodeo for this bill. It, I, know, I remember it came up last uh, session, and you've made some changes since then. What have you changed and why? The, the bill last year was very prescriptive. We had, it was a bit longer, very prescriptive, how the school should do it. This year, uh, they stripped all of that out and just said, basically, they turned over the responsibility to, of creating a rating system to the Department of Education. They can bring in people and consult, but the responsibility will be turned over to them to create the system. And they can be very flexible. It's based on state law, world's best workforce, and rankings uh, of uh, ESSA at the federal level. They can use a combination of those. They're already available. They collect the data. So all they got to do is put it in a usable, usable format for parents to understand. And parents want it. So you mentioned ratings. and. And I'm just wondering, is the idea then similar to U.S. News and World Report has their best high school rankings? Uh, is it something like that, but then for all schools, so just you can quickly compare and contrast different yes. schools? Yes, yes, absolutely. The, the school should have nothing to hide. And our job is to make sure the, the parents have uh, in, understandable information. They should have nothing to hide. And if they do, then they should improve it. The parents should have the opportunity to look at these schools and then compare them. And there is nothing in there that they couldn't adjust and tweak and account for, whether it's uh, uh, English as a second language students or anything else. So it's all about transparency and the parents want it. The surveys, the data shows that they, 
They want it, they'd use it, it'd be good for them. Is this just for public schools, or does it also apply to private schools and charter schools? Well, we only have jurisdiction over the pri pu public schools, so public schools would include the uh, charter schools as well. Okay. Uh, if the bill passes, and as a result, a family learns that their children are attending a school with a poor score, what can or should they do with this information? Well, I, uh, I don't know. We haven't thought about that, but certainly it's information a parent can use. The schools aren't going to be happy if there are three stars or four stars, but um, it's not an easy job for MDE to do, but we were going to do it from last year. They decided they didn't like that, so we'll come at it from a different approach. But uh, we don't know. I'm sure the parents will look at it and, you know. Well, consumers there... hold us accountable for everything, right? They, whether you're buying shoes or a jacket or a car, uh, consumers hold the, 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 the vendors accountable, and that's how this should be. We serve the citizens. And some of the testimony is just unbelievable how they want to fight back and push back against the desire and the will and the wishes of the citizens. It's unbelievable. Uh, rating systems do exist in other states, yes. and critics across the nation have pointed out that this single letter grade or a single, you know, a number of stars or whatever is an incomplete picture of the school and that it's just too simple of a measure. So how do you respond to that? I say then you start with that this, the rating system is not the end game. They can put anything else up there on the dashboard they want. But here's the rating system, and here's the five bullet points, and here's something else you should see, something else you should know. Here's what we have for school, for music, et cetera. Those are important things. The parents are going to take those into consideration. You have to trust the parents. A lot of these people just don't trust parents. they got to trust parents. They're the customers, and they ought to trust them. They know better. Let's turn now to tax credits. Uh, you've Whoa, proposed good. the Equity and Opportunity Scholarship Act, yes. which would provide tax credits to individuals or corporations for scholarships directed to low and middle income kids. What is the objective of this? Opportunity for kids. Uh, we have some, uh, to sum it up, new solutions, new opportunities, new hope for uh, kids to solve some old uh, stubborn K-12 problems. We. Anybody, who, uh, anybody you talk to, it's talked about every day in, this build, in these buildings, about the problems and the challenges with K-12. Well, let's have something different. Let's try a different approach, a different route to give these parents some, uh, empower parents, give them the choice and options. Too many kids are stuck in, there's a lot of great schools and a lot of great educators. There's a lot of bad schools and a lot of bad educators. A lot of kids are stuck in bad schools and they can't get out when other people who have the means can get out. This, is a, this levels a playing field. It gives those low and uh, middle income kids who could not otherwise get out and find new opportunities, it gives them new opportunity, new hope to get the education they need and they want. Parents can choose. We choose everything else. We choose, as I said in the, in the press conference and in the um, testimony, right now the state of Minnesota gives state money so you can choose the preschool you want. We give state money at the higher ed level to choose the college university you want to go to, grant money, private or public. Same on the preschool, private or public. We bookend it, in the middle, they get left out. So it's, this is not new, this is just empowers parents and puts the uh, power of choice in their hands and not in my hands or bureaucrats' hands. So people, corporations, donate money to a 501c3 and then this entity then provides scholarship money so these kids then can go to any school that they choose. Yes, exactly, including public schools. We have, we have three found. We have three things you can do. It can be a two two foundations: a, a regular qualified foundation and a qualified public school foundation. So anyone can create a 501c3 that be a qualified foundation or a qualified public school foundation, and they can contribute to it and they can give money to public schools or private schools. Well, you don't give it to them directly. You create the foundation, and it funnels through different ways through the kids. Um, so the public schools are now left out. As I said and has been said before, this is liberating not only to kids and parents, families, but also educators, and this will improve outcomes. It will improve outcomes. We have to do something different. The web of uh, bureaucracy and, and the uh, gauntlet you've got to run to change the simplest thing isn't working for these kids. They need the same opportunities, deserve the same opportunities 
that every other kid, that other kids have in this state. They deserve those opportunities. We even have a transportation uh, 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 process there too where you can take money from the qualified foundation and give it to a kid so they can be transported across district lines to go to another public school. So the public schools are not left out of this. They're part of the equation, they're part of the whole system and we need them and we need strong public education and pu public schools. But we have to change how we do it. Senator Chamberlain, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Good to see you again.